The film begins with a view of two policemen, Anthony and Juan, along with other police members, on their way to a location that will be raided. This location that will be raided is a hub for drug production and transactions. During the journey, Juan happily shares with Anthony that he will be a father soon because his wife is pregnant and about to give birth. Hearing this story, Anthony is also happy about his friend's impending parenthood. Upon arriving at the location, Anthony asks Juan to wait in the car. Anthony, along with the other police members, then enters to ambush the people at the site. One by one, they are apprehended and brought out by the police. As Anthony checks a room, he finds a dealer in the middle of a transaction with a woman. A large-bodied man being escorted by the police nonchalantly suddenly attacks due to a lapse in the escorting officer's vigilance. Anthony tries to chase him while outside, Juan is seen talking on the phone with his wife. Juan appears very shocked and unprepared, whereas the large-bodied man is far more ready and immediately fires several shots at Juan, instantly killing him. The man then manages to escape. Anthony, witnessing this event, feels very sad and angry for losing his partner and friend in the line of duty. The scene shifts to an old man named Nick, who is seen lounging and enjoying life on his home, a boat. It is revealed that Nick is a former hitman who always worked for the government and is now retired. Soon after, an old friend of Nick's comes to visit him. This man is from the government and has come specifically to offer Nick a job. He offers Nick to return to being a hitman for the government because the target is suspected of potentially damaging the American economy. Upon hearing the offer, Nick initially refuses because he is retired and feels too old. However, Nick eventually agrees after being persuaded and learning that the payment is very enticing. Returning to Anthony at the police station, he looks gloomy because he still feels a significant loss for Juan and seems guilty for having left Juan waiting in the car until he lost his life. Seeing Anthony lose his spirit, Anthony's boss suggests he take a leave of absence to rest and calm himself. However, Anthony refuses because he feels he is still okay. Not long after, Juan's pregnant wife arrives there and immediately pours out her sorrow to Anthony. She also asks Anthony to find and prosecute her husband's killer quickly. Anthony calms her down and promises to find the culprit. Next, Anthony and his superior entered the interrogation room. Inside, they both interrogated a dealer they had just caught. During the interrogation, the dealer explained that his boss was not an ordinary supplier and had big plans. The dealer hinted that he would provide that information in exchange for a reduced sentence. Additionally, he wanted to rest at a hotel before entering prison. Although the request seemed unreasonable, the police desperately needed the information, so they had no choice but to comply with the dealer's demands. In another scene, Nick had prepared everything for his mission from weaponry to making his vehicle unrecognizable. Nick already knew the information about his target and immediately headed to a location. There, Nick pretended to be an ordinary person, but his eyes watched a hotel where his target was. Then, when the right time came, he hurried to a rooftop across from the hotel, carrying his favorite rifle in a golf bag. Nick then aimed at his target, who turned out to be a dealer relaxing at a hotel. Shortly after, Anthony arrived at the hotel to pick up the dealer to take him back to the cell. Nick did not take his aim off, and when Anthony took the dealer outside to get into the vehicle, Nick shot the dealer dead on the spot. Standing by his side, Anthony was shocked because he did not expect such an incident to happen. He immediately rushed to the estimated location of the shooter. They are coinciding with Nick, who had just descended, they passed each other, but Anthony did not realize that the elderly man he passed was his shooter. After the shooting incident of the dealer, the police had to lose their informant. However, this lasted only briefly because Anthony's superior received information from his spies. It was suspected that the dealer was part of a network group now suspected of conducting transactions in a place. Anthony was then ordered to monitor the group. Hearing this, Anthony immediately carried out his duty. Then, Anthony and his colleagues began surveillance through CCTV. However, Anthony couldn't hear anything because the surveillance camera was hacked for images without sound. Eventually, he decided to go directly to the location in disguise as a buyer. Upon arrival, Anthony was only allowed to sit outside because the room inside was reserved exclusively for buyers or irregular customers. Anthony then looked for another way. When he saw a female chef, he thought that she might be able to help him. When the chef came out, Anthony immediately followed her and introduced himself. The sudden approach startled the woman and she refused him and then walked away. After being rejected, Anthony immediately introduced himself as a police officer who wanted to talk momentarily. Knowing this, the woman, named Mina, finally agreed to have a conversation. Anthony and the woman introduced themselves. Her name was Mina. Anthony revealed that he desperately needed Mina's help to install a recording device in the VIP room where Mina worked. 
Initially, Mina refused because she was worried about losing her job if she was discovered doing such a thing. However, after being pressed by Anthony, Mina eventually agreed to help him. After the meeting, Anthony returned to his colleagues monitoring the CCTV cameras. Through the cameras, it was observed that Mina started to act, storing the recording device she had received from Anthony. A short while later, a group of people entered the premises. However, they moved to another room, rendering Mina's efforts futile as their conversation could not be heard. Simultaneously, Nick was also monitoring the exact location. Nick put on a head cover without wasting time and entered the premises through the back way. Next, it was observed that the group included a man named Ferry, the boss of a drug network. Ferry was having a meeting with a scientist to discuss a plan. According to a previous dealer's statement, Ferry was not just a supplier. He had plans to destroy the American economy. Therefore, Ferry collaborated with a scientist who demonstrated an advanced device capable of shutting down a city's electricity with just one press on a mobile phone. Not long after, as they were engrossed in discussing their plans, suddenly, an unknown Nick entered and immediately opened fire on them, instantly killing several of Ferry men. At the same time, Ferry and the scientist managed to safely secure themselves and escape from the place. A short time after the turmoil, Anthony arrived at the location. Unfortunately, there was nothing left there. Following the incident, Ferry appeared panicked and asked the scientist to complete his device quickly. The scientist responded that he would soon perfect and finish the sophisticated device quickly, but on the condition that he be paid a higher price. Hearing this, Ferry did not hesitate and immediately agreed. On a different day, a party organized by Ferry's sister was seen. Many guests were invited to the event. Tony was there too, aiming to find out Fairy whereabouts. Anthony asked Fairy's sister about Fairy without hesitation, but she claimed not to know his whereabouts. Elsewhere, Fairy, along with his men including the big man who was Juan's killer, was seen monitoring the party organized by Fairy's sister through CCTV. The big man recognized Anthony at the party. He reported to Fairy that Anthony was a narcotics detective who had raided their headquarters some time ago. Hearing this, Ferry immediately ordered his men to teach Anthony a lesson. At the party, Anthony also met Mina, who turned out to be the chef. Moreover, after some time, he noticed Nick's presence. When trying to check on Nick, Anthony lost sight of him. He then looked for him and attempted to chase Nick along with Mina, whom he asked to join him but Anthony lost track of Nick during the chase. Anthony's failure to chase Nick made him try again. Anthony is now back where he lost sight of Nick and waited for quite some time. Finally, he saw Nick's car pass by in front of him. Without wasting any time, Anthony chased and stopped the vehicle, then directly asked for Nick's identity. Anthony was shocked because it turned out Nick was his biological father, who had left him a long time ago. After Nick revealed his identity, Anthony was invited to visit his home in the dockside area. There, Anthony immediately asked why Nick had left him when he was still a teenager and just after his mother had passed away. Nick explained that he was a government-hired assassin and had decided to leave Anthony for his son's safety. Hearing this explanation, Anthony seemed to understand and accept it. Moreover, Nick explained that the mission he was currently on was the same one Anthony was working on, hunting down Ferry and his group, who had plans to devastate the American economy. Then after a long conversation between the father and son who had just reunited, Anthony decided to leave. Nick gave him a cell phone as he was about to go so they could communicate. Not long afterward, it turned out that fairy men were already watching Anthony, and they immediately ambushed Anthony and took him away. In summary, Anthony is now held hostage at fairy headquarters. Fairy asks Anthony about the identity of the person who killed his men. Casually, Anthony replies that it was the doing of his biological father. Seeing Anthony's fearless demeanor, fairy orders his men to beat him up. Meanwhile, Nick is seen on his way to where Anthony is held captive. It turns out Nick knows this place from the phone he had previously given to Anthony, which was set up to connect to his GPS. Upon arrival of his experience as an assassin, Nick manages to enter and kill several of Fairy men, then successfully rescues Anthony and takes him to his home for treatment. Meanwhile, Fairy manages to escape along with his remaining men. Shortly after Nick's attack, the police arrived at the scene. The officers saw several of Fairy men who had been killed. The police also found equipment belonging to Ferry that was to be used for his evil plan and immediately secured it. At the same time, Anthony received a call from Mina. It turned out that Mina had been kidnapped by the big man. The big man threatened Anthony to come as soon as possible if he wanted Mina to be safe. Anthony then prepared to rush over. In short, Anthony and Nick had now arrived at the location. Anthony entered alone and saw Ferry men pointing their guns at Mina.
they negotiated, and Ferryman demanded Anthony bring his father there. Amidst the tension, Nick suddenly shot the man, followed by Anthony, who immediately beat him up. Their success put Ferryman on the defensive. Nick then asked Ferris Man to disclose Ferry whereabouts. Ferry Man revealed his location, but they had to pay him. They agreed to plan an attack on Ferry. At his residence, Ferry was seen with a scientist who came to ask for an upfront payment for the initial project of his device. However, since the device was now in the hands of the police, Ferry did not pay with money but rather with a bullet that pierced the scientist's head. This tragic action was witnessed by Ferry, sister, who was shocked to see Ferry brutality. Not long after, a large man came carrying Nick as if Nick had been captured. He also showed a body bag to Ferry. Still, when Ferry opened it, Anthony was already inside, pointing his gun at Ferry. Ferry and his men felt cornered. Ferry ordered them to attack, but Nick and Anthony quickly killed Ferry men. After Ferry and his men were defeated, Ferry traitorous subordinate demanded the promised pay from Nick and Anthony. Still, they did not pay him and put him in the body bag instead. Shortly after, the police arrived at the location and their mission successfully stopped Ferry and his group's grand plans. Several years later, Anthony and his father were seen gathering at their residence on the dock. Anthony had married Mina and had been blessed with a child. Nick, who had a young wife, was also there. There, Nick suggested they all move to a more comfortable place because he had a lot of money. Soon, Nick received a call from his government colleague about a new mission with a far more fantastic payment and the film ended.